Good day again from Down Under. Uh, another little video, or perhaps two, on um, spindle turning. I've had a few questions relating to mounting of chucks and generating of G-code. Uh, so we'll go into that, specifically using your milling CAD CAM software to generate XY code and then convert that to ZX code for doing spindle uh, turning of shapes that would be difficult to hand code. Shapes such as radii and angles. Um, so I'll go through that subject now in two videos. A short introduction video, which is this one, and then I'll follow on with a more advanced video going into the details for those of you who are interested to persevere with me. Okay, well let's start this video a little bit towards the end of the journey so you can get a feel for where it's headed. We're going to do some spindle turning, but just not just normal ZX moves to, to turn face and diameter, but also we're going to turn radii or arcs and angles or chamfers. So here's a, um, a back plot of the NC code showing some angles and radii. And, um, Here's a little piece of sample acetal to try it. Let's just run that now. Cutting a radius, doing a straight portion, and cutting a tapered portion. So we have a radius groove chamfers or angle portions and plane diameters. If you have asked me questions about chucks and back plates and how they can be mounted. Um, so here's an example of the R8 shank or arbor screwed into a uh, 125 millimeter diameter mild steel back plate. It takes both a 80mm chuck and this bigger 125mm chuck. And what I've done with this one is I've ground the outer step of the jaws off to make it specifically more suitable for spindle turning and bored the inside bore out to the maximum diameter before I strike the scroll inner diameter inside. And you might ask why I do that. There's a couple of good advantages. One is that on a, on a spindle turning chuck, you don't really want the chuck jaws sticking out past the chuck body uh, on a light spindle spinning round. Um, and if they are, this portion here is not doing any guidance or of any use anyway, and it's outside of the scroll area. So I just rationalize, or I'll just grind that off. That gives a, a more streamlined chuck. And um, you're only losing guidance when the jaws are fully in. And in that case, I would mount a smaller chuck anyway. Now these small Chinese chucks are very cheap. Um, even in New Zealand, they're quite cheap. So I imagine in the US, they're very affordable. Um, so also boring out the bore, um, you don't need massive strength in a, a spindle turning chuck because you're not taking big cuts in steel and so maximum capacity for the size of chuck is a big advantage. Before I screw the back plate on the chuck I'll just show you a stop that I've got inside the um, R8 Arbor face plate. So it's just a piece of uh, diameter rod with a grub screw in this area um, with a soft end on it, probably got a copper insert in there and um, you can set that um, piece of diameter shaft at a length position or use a different length shaft for some jobs and that lets you set the part repeatedly in the same position in the chuck which is very handy for production work. If you have a two speed spindle such as the Tomark 1100 it's a good idea to set it on the low speed range and that way you can't accidentally spin the big chuck too fast so you got to limit it at uh, 2000 rpm um, another idea I'm planning to do is to measure the gap between the spindle nose and the face plate 
and make a spacer. Um, so if you're doing heavy machining in steel, or relatively heavy machining, you're getting the stability of the support of the end of the spindle nose, which would be an advantage and, and could cut down on certain types of vibration. So just measure that with an expanding parallel, for example. So let's just run this now. Okay, so as mentioned on other videos, so you've got a floating um, back plate, so the chuck floats on it um, with a bit of clearance around the screws, then you can nip them up um, and adjust it to run true. So let's just run that. Uh, show the RPMs. Okay, so that's clocked up fairly true now. And you just type it, tighten the bolts up when that's running true. Let's just move that out the way and bump it up to 2000 RPM. So that's a 5 inch chuck running at 2000 RPM. There's no real vibration there. It seems fine. And that's adequate for most work, I would imagine. Um, I would be a little bit uncomfortable running that light spindle with a big chuck any faster than that. Okay, we're well, carrying on with this brief introduction to spindle turning, a more complicated profile. We don't want to hand code that complicated profile. So this is all this video and, and the more advanced um, part two video is about showing how you can use your milling. CAD CAM software to produce NC code for spindle turning. So let's do a little simulation of that profile that you saw just being run uh, in the mill um, so you can get a bit of an introduction to it. So we've got a 1 16th cutter that is generating on the XY plane uh, that simple profile. I'll just rewind that again. So this is the diameter of the cutter and we're just demonstrating it, cutting that profile. Okay, so in order to do that, we've just used the milling CAD CAM. In this case, it's Bobcad CAM version 25, uh, but I'm sure you can use most um, programs for this stage. Producing your geometry, your radii, your, your lines, and just a simple um, offset profile toolpath and then generating the NC code we'll now go down to the workshop and convert that quickly to uh, spindle turning code uh, and go into it in, in, in more detail in the subsequent video. So we put the NC code into Pathpilot control software and it's still in the XY format I'll just run it briefly. We're just cutting the parallel diameter here. We're cutting the radii in and out, parallel diameter, and the taper. But of course, at the moment, we haven't converted it for spindle turning. So the next stage is to edit the G-code to make it suitable for spindle turning in the ZX axis. Um, I'll go into that in detail in the next video. Just briefly, it's about um, replacing X with Z and Y with X and uh, changing uh, some of the arc formatting around to suit the correct plane. Um, that's to do with J to K values and uh, G17 to G18 and those sort of details which are quite complicated um, if you are not um, particularly competent on software or IT. I, I, am, I certainly struggle with it. I come from a background of mechanical uh, engineering, of, of tool making and um, had to learn all this at a later stage in life the hard way. Um, so um, it, it's not easy for me and so perhaps I'm well placed to explain it to beginners because I understand the difficulties involved. So I'll go into that as well.